All right, we are in fact live. So uh, welcome to our viewers. This is Chariot the Alpha Test. And I have Sharon with me here. And we are going to run through our character creation process. And the way this works for this game is it's uh, more like a semi-informal interview. Uh, so we kind of talk about the game and we're gonna talk about your goals as a role player. We're going to talk about some preferences you have for pronouns and that type of stuff and what type of character you want to play, some characters you admire, as well as what kind of roles are, are available. So I'm going to give a little introduction to the game, uh, which I will do uh, at the beginning of some of our streams, um, to talk all about what the game is. So this game is Chariot LARP. It is an immersive digital live action role playing experience and uh this game takes place on earth war torn earth in at the end of this century before we leave and uh so instead of being on a spaceship that's left we are getting ready to leave and we're coping with that grief and the loss of all the things that we're going to be leaving behind when we uh when we go to Proxima B and start civilization anew. So that's what's going on there. Um, and we're going to start with Sharon. And Sharon, if you could just give a bit of an intro and uh, tell everyone about um, your experience in LARPing and what kind of LARPing you've done and what kind of characters that you have played in the past. I've done um, Road Trip the LARP. I do a local LARP called Seven Kingdom IGE. Um, various other random LARPs along the way. I've played various characters, and one of the things that I like to do when I LARP is to um, make characters that aren't a ton like me. Um, they always have something to do with me, but I sometimes like to use LARP characters to explore, you know, some aspect of myself that I haven't explored yet. So um, I haven't quite figured out what I want to do for this one, except that it won't be the same as any of the other ones. Fantastic. So knowing a bit about the concept, um, how comfortable are you with exploring certain themes like um, grief and kind of like longing for a new start? Like how do you as a player feel about those things and kind of like where you are in your life? Um, they're, they're both things I can absolutely resonate to. Um, you know, I've had losses in my life and I've had things in my life that I feel like it's hard to escape from that I would love a new start. Um, that being said, I kind of, I'm really aware that I don't want to play a character who's so close to me that I run into a whole lot of bleed issues directly between my life and my character's life. Mm hmm yeah, that makes sense. And for those who are watching us who may not be experienced role players, bleed is when you experience feelings in character that then kind of translate into your out of character self or vice versa. You can bleed into. And uh, sometimes LARPers wish to experience bleed intentionally. Sometimes we want to, like I, for example, I like exploring bleed uh, intentionally in like in certain areas, but not in others. So, uh, for example, I like, exp I like to explore grief as bleed. Um, I don't like my romantic plots to have bleed unless I'm playing with somebody I'm actually involved with. So that's like a good example of bleed that you'd want to keep, bleed that you want to avoid. And we have every player has their different preferences there. So, I mean, it sounds to me like you might be really interested in kind of like exploring the whole new start aspect of this game. Awesome. And, you know, to give some information about my character, she's going to have, she's the captain, and she's ready to go. So when I, you know, have my set dressing or whatever, it's going to be a bunch of boxes and stuff behind me. Like, she's already packed. She's, like, ready to roll. So you can play a character to any stage of acceptance or grief or whatever you want to call it, or really someone who's just ready to go. Uh, so that said, I'm going to run through the different positions on the ship. And of course, the type of position that your character holds is just one aspect 
of uh, who your character is. But I'm going to run through a few different things, and then you can go ahead and uh, tell me uh, which of those you prefer. And I think I'm going to do this by memory because my computer does not love having too many things open at once. But you can be um, a crew member. So an example of a crew member might be a civilian uh, relationship expert. You could be uh, like, a, like the executive officer. So you're like, you would be like my character's right hand who's in charge of running stuff. Um, or you could have anything that you would think about like on Star Trek or, or any other sci-fi show. Somebody in charge of engineering, um, someone in charge of medical, like any of that stuff. Um, medical does have its own section. Medical uh, is autonomous. And in this setting, uh, we're going to, as players, agree that people in the future who want to secure a new world, to, to create you know, civilization on a new world, would agree that life is valuable enough to um, ensure things like health care for everybody and rights for everyone. So our characters are you know, generally progressive enough to want each other to not die. Um, so medical is autonomous so that it's not in danger of that being manipulated. So our medical is its own section. And then we have CSOPs, which is our ship operations. And those are the people in charge of handling the mostly automated systems on the ship, like waste disposal, um, cooking. But they're also in charge of things like IT. You know, not just, hey, I'm a civilian and my computer is not working, but like there's a major problem on the ship. Who fixes it? They do. So they have a lot of um, responsibility as well. And you can kind of see politically where I'm going with this. They're not different factions. They're not arguing or necessarily are different beliefs, but they each have their own agency, each of these things. Um, so you can be that. We do have uh, politicians on board the ship who are separate from the military entirely, and they operate a provisional government, which I've left intentionally um, intentionally kind of blank. Uh, and there are weekly votes that happen during the LARP. So who, if anybody chooses to play a political character, that political character would actually get to run the votes um, every single time. And any issues that we come up with, they're voted on every, every week. So that's kind of also a, a feature of the game. Um, and then we have scientists. And the science division is super important on this kind of mission. Uh, basically anything you can imagine in real life we have on uh, in this setting. Um, you know, we need botanists and, um, and people to, uh, you know, preserve plant life and to watch it grow and to make sure we're ready to, to go. And um, basically any other kind of scientists or scientific advancements that you could imagine we have as well we also have creatives so on the, in this setting creativity and art are valued our ship is not going to reach proxima b in our lifetimes nor our children's lifetimes uh, and our grandchildren will be super old by the time they get there so uh it'll be like our great grandkids that actually settle proxima b so we we need to document our journey so we'll have like a chronicler We'll have artists and musicians to um, kind of document the journey and to keep us entertained and to keep morale high. Um, and then, uh, who am I missing? I think the last component that I'm really missing, uh, the educators, which are people who educate at all levels. Uh, the ship will have, um, well, the LARP is 18+, plus, but the ship in concept has people of all ages on it. So we'll need teachers um, and all educational levels and vocational levels. And in order to feel fulfillment, people on the ship are going to want to learn more things as well. Um, so we have that. And um, yeah, and then the only other position, uh, which is kind of a separate thing, kind of like the politician, is the counselor position, who um, they're in charge. And that position does require a lot of emotional labor. So they're in charge of like ensuring that everyone's okay. And um, actually will be leading as a scripted PC, they'll be leading part of the um, mission and, and keeping an eye on uh, how the characters grieve and whether they do. Uh, the out of game portion of that will be my responsibility as the GM to kind of check in with everyone and make sure everything's okay and we'll all 
take on that social contract together of doing that. But the counselor is responsible for that in-game uh, stuff. So of all of those different, um, of all of those different professions, uh, does anything stick out at you, or is there anything I didn't mention that perhaps you might be interested in exploring in this setting? I just want to make sure I understand here. Mm -hmm. The alpha test that we're running is going to be setting up people on the ship, but not actually going on the ship. Yet. That's correct. Yeah, and the design decision, the design decision for that. Right now, it's only set up to go on the ship. And that design decision was based on a couple of factors. We had a conversation like a month or two ago about this. And we had kind of come to the conclusion that it feels a little weird for us to be on the same ship together and like not interact face to face. So online, it's going to do a little bit better for us if we can um, interact Oh, I just got a new follower. Thank you very much to for whoever just followed. Um, so on the LARP, it'll be a lot better if we can, um, in and out of game, communicate on the computer. So in this game, it's us on the computer. So that's... Yeah, yeah. So we're not on the trip yet. But... Oh, go ahead. Yes. And what are the intentions in terms of carrying over culture from a prior civilization versus creating a new one, especially given that there'll be generations who have never been on land on a ship? Yeah. How do you make sure that they understand what it's like to operate on the planet? Yeah. Yeah, that's really fascinating, and I could actually see combining the counselor role as well as that, like, keeper of culture role, or even, like, a lore keeper who's kind of responsible for really thinking about that. I'd actually kind of see that almost as a responsibility of, like, a librarian in a, in a future context, you know? Yeah, so I'm envisioning for you a librarian who's responsible for culture and information. Um, but maybe she acts kind of like a bartender in a way. Like, people come in to talk about culture, to get some information. And um, when they do, they also, like, they expect her to kind of lend an ear. You know, like, hey have a problem can you listen to it so the counselor role is sort of integrated and i i like the idea that the emotional well-being and the um the culture and the carryover of our culture um our our earth culture is actually kind of managed and um and and documented almost by the same person that's really cool how do you feel about that kind of role? Oh, I like it. It sounds good. And part of it is, I mean, some of the challenge will be is that the group needs to make decisions about what culture they want to carry. 
Yeah. That's really cool, and this the, the reason this LARP is going to be so different in every run is because of insights like that. Um, and, you know, if I were to, to write this kind of character for you, you might see something like, you know, mission prep. You need to speak with the crew members during your allotted time about what things are going to take with them in this limited size, like maybe they get three boxes or something like that. Um, what objects do they take with them? What do they leave behind? Um, and how many of those are cultural things that they want to preserve? And one way this LARP is going to be dealing with culture and um, cultural issues. So most of the people who have signed up for the alpha test and also the beta run are on the East Coast just because of the time we've selected to do this. Uh, after that, we've got some West Coast US people. Um, we've got one participant from Canada. We have, um, you know, a couple people interested in Europe in doing this. And so I'm, I'm going to run future runs, whatever is convenient for them, right? Um, but the idea is we're going on a ship of 233 people. And we're just 10 people on that 233 person ship. So uh, we might be like, hey, everybody, these are all the people in your time zone or whatever, you know, on the ship. So culturally... Um, you could frame that as thinking about our culture or uh, things like that. Yeah, so, oh, hey, we have a beta tester watching the stream. It's good to see you. Woo. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I think uh, that's a lot to work with. Do you have any particular characters from media, um, like TV shows, movies, that kind of thing, that you like in terms of, like, the archetype that they play or a certain aspect of that character, how they do something really cool. Uh, it's funny, the one who comes to mind, and I don't even, I haven't watched the show enough to be super, uh, 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 knowing a lot about it, but like, you know, Deanna Troy kind of character. Mm -hmm. her kind of role. I love her. She's like one of my favorite characters of all time. Also, who's that one, the, the one in Firefly? Um, Inara? Yeah, I mean, which is a little different, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. And you know what? Both of those characters make me think, like, wisdom is kind of sexy. You know? Like, they they have, like, this, like, empathy is attractive in multiple ways. And I kind of, I really kind of see maybe doing that kind of thing. I really like that idea. And then the other important question that I want to ask you um, is pronouns. Uh, what do you prefer, and what kind of pronouns would you prefer for your character? Uh, my pronouns are she, her, her. Okay. Um, it's funny, when I came on before I had any idea about the character, I was thinking of a, a them character, but this one's kind of feeling a bit like a female archetype in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to play just because... Okay. All right. Awesome. That sounds good. And anything else that you would want to add to this character or that you themes that you would want to explore in this LARP? The only other thing that I want to add, especially since you're playing, you're going to be playing some kind of counselor character, is um, that there will be news updates. So I'm trying to stay kind of far from... Uh, conflicts that we're experiencing in real life but there are going to be um, general like war related updates of like things are getting bad to instill a sense of urgency so as the counselor you might need to deal with people who um, react to that in different ways my character will be like the world's blowing up I'm ready to go whereas another character might 
feel like, okay, I was in the military and I feel like I'm abandoning my country by leaving, stuff like that. Um, so uh, I just want to make sure, like, would you be comfortable uh, playing that type of counselor role? Yeah, I think I would. Awesome. With the understanding being that probably at some point I would want to have somebody as a confidant or support person. Okay. Put it this way, I, I certainly don't want to be a counselor who only processes other people's emotions and doesn't have them. Right, before. right. And obviously I'd be there as a human person to, who's dealing with this. So at some point to figure out who counsels the counselor or who supports the counselor in a way that allows them to to function. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, and one thing that I'm playing with, and I'm just kind of testing it out, because all of us as players are limited on time, and this LARP is very time-intensive, um, is, and you're, you're of course, very familiar with pre-role play and text-based role play, and this game takes place over the course of about a month. So we do, you know, I am really familiar with a program called Discord, which is a voice and uh, text chat server. And uh, so an optional thing that I'm going to allow for all of the players is they can join the Geek Initiative Discord and they can work through some of that stuff in character um, while, you know, uh, while the game is going on since it takes place over the course of a month. So if you have a scene that you want to role play before the next event, you can do that. But I also understand that it's a huge time commitment and I'm not going to expect anyone to do that. Um, I'm kind of playing with that and going back and forth on it since this is the alpha test. I want to see how people feel about it and whether it's too much of a time commitment or too little to add that in. Um, but uh, when you talk about who counsels the counselor and um, just a way to like ensure that you have that, I'm certain that there are other characters in here that can help with that, whether it's on stream or whether it's in the Discord roleplay, which the Discord roleplay I plan to keep private. That's not going to be streamed at all. So the things that we discuss there in and out of game won't be streamed. The planned sessions will be. So that's also something to kind of keep in mind as things go on. All right. And that's unless you have anything else you want to add or any other questions that you wanted to ask, uh, I have more than enough to write an awesome character for you. All right. Well, Sharon, thank you. All right. I will get your character to you in the next four or five days. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Dave, are you on the call? All right. I am still waiting for uh, one of the other participants to show up. And while I wait for him... If you guys have any questions that you want to field to me concerning this LARP or anything else in development, you can go ahead and send that send it my way. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Chariot Alpha and what we're doing here. Um, Chariot Alpha is the first run, and it's just a test, of a LARP that seems to be taking off really well. It is a digital, immersive, live-action role-playing game, and um, it's I think it's the first thing that's really been done as a LARP and not as a, um, a very well role-played tabletop role-playing game. And uh, that's kind of the premise for it. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop the link or drop your questions in. And um, I will be sure to answer those for you. Uh, so it takes place over the course of a month. It's like two hours per session. And that's how it is. Dave, are you there? I think I see him trying to call in, but I do not quite see him. All right, so I'm going to give him just another minute to pop in. And uh, if not, we'll just do the next character creation stream in a bit. But again, if you have any questions... Go ahead and post those in here, and I'm just going to try and ca catch up with Dave real fast and see what he's up to, because I'm really excited to create his character as well and to have him in on this crew. 
And this character creation process, by the way, um, s you know, some games handle it differently. Some games you get assigned a character, uh, even in Nordic LARP. Um, other games you get, uh, it's more rare, but you get like a more personalized consultation like this instead of just a questionnaire. And that's what I'm, ga that's what I'm aiming for here since the game itself has only 10 total slots, including mine, um, per thing. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going to reply to Dave here because he was questioning about whether he should click this link at 8.30. And I want to tell him yes, but my computer is slow. And I must tell him to do that. Okay. Alright, so we'll have him on in just a minute. And again, any questions you have, just go ahead and post them in the stream and I will handle this for you. Just be aware there is a, uh, like a 7 or 8 second delay um, with what you post and what I see. So it's going to take me a second to see some of these things. And I'm going to work on getting Dave in here in just a sec. Awesome. Okay. So he should be in any second. And I'm going to come back and see if you guys have any questions. What really distinguishes it from a well role played uh, RPG, which I assume you mean the tabletop role playing game? That's a fantastic question. So, in this game, um, and it's blending styles, right? So, in this game, there are, there are no dice. You're not rolling for anything like that. Not that all tabletop role playing games do. Um, the only thing that makes this different from a live action role playing game. Uh, that you do in person is that it's over the computer. That's the only distinguishing thing. So we do emotional safety workshops, which again, you can also do in a table, tabletop game. Um, you can, um, you know, interact uh, in your like side missions and everything like that between events. And um, the main thing that would distinguish it is that it's very immersive. So aside from the emotional safety mechanics that we use, to denote out of game uh, discussion for very specific reasons, we're in game the whole time. So, in a well role played tabletop game, um, I certainly prefer for people to stay in character most of the time, but it usually involves a certain amount of narration. So, in this game, as a GM, if this were a tabletop game, even if we weren't playing with dice, um, you might say, like, okay, uh, now I want to um, enter the castle, right? And if I were the GM, I'd say, or now I want to go to the spaceship and enter it. We'll keep it in the setting. And I would say as the GM, okay, you enter the spaceship and you, you know that something's wrong and there are red lights on. Um, in this game, it's not narrated like that. It's actual action. Uh, and again, the reason that we're doing this whole um, in and out of game that this is happening over the computer is so that we don't destroy that immersion. So what you're seeing is me, the captain, here, and I'm going to have boxes in the background, and I'm going to be talking to you as the captain. So from start to finish, it'll be in character, unless we need to break immersion for um, safety reasons. So that happens like this, and um, this is a great prelude to the safety workshop that you'll see us do. Uh, you know, if, like, say somebody's getting upset, I can, I can either send them a private message, right, and ask if they're okay, or I could say to them, uh, out of game, uh, are, you know, play your name, are you, um, are you okay, do you need a break, and if they say they do, then that's cool, they hop out of the call, uh, and then, you know, we handle that, um, or we can even handle that on, on scene, but, you know, if people do get upset, they're probably not going to want to handle all of that on camera. So that's kind of how the emotional safety stuff works. Um, but generally, there's not narration. There's not a break in gameplay. Once we start, it's very immersive. It's very much like, you know, I don't have to describe the setting. You're seeing the setting. So I'm, uh, you know, I'll have my name, like, on the screen underneath here. And I'll, and I'll be like, uh, this is Captain Emily Sullivan. Uh, I am... Uh, 32 days away from launching Chariot, I am responsible for 233 lives aboard the ship, and our goal is to reach Proxima B and um, escape the war of this planet so that we can start again with a fairer government and society for everyone. 
and you know that can kind of set the tone for everything we will also have cool little things in the middle like um kind of like an mtv uh you know old school mtv shows how they would do like the confessional right like real world or um also like uh like in star trek when you do the captain's log so that that could be pretty cool um so those are the different things that we'll be able to do but primarily the game time will focus on full immersion start to finish without the narration um i've played extremely um immersive and even narrative tabletops and part of my idea is that these styles are blending and uh shows like critical role had a really big part in that you know these styles are blending but this is the first one i think where we're saying okay this is a larp and we're doing this online and it's um like it's a paid adventure uh so i hope that answers your question depending on the character type how time intensive is this game like do you need to be on time with the specific time slots yes uh that's correct um each game uh for chariot has a schedule so i'm doing one run for the uh primarily for the east coast one run, run primarily for the west coast of the united states and we have a couple people from elsewhere in the world scattered about there. We're also doing um, a run only for people of color. And for that game, I'm actually going to be handing the captain role over. So I'm not even going to be GMing the game. I'm going to hand it over to, uh, to um, a GM that I know uh, who is uh, a person of color. And they will be running the game. Uh, which is the eventual plan for this. Because I want to go on and write other cool stuff. Um, but still have Chariot running. So they'll be running the game. And I'm going to be off. Uh, you know just kind of watching and making sure everything's okay. And supporting in the chat. And then following that we're going to do a woman only run. And all of the other runs are just general runs. Where anybody can sign up. Uh, there isn't a limit to the number of runs we can do. And I do also hope to have. Um you know, different subject matters kind of run in the same online format. But I think it has to be very carefully done. Uh, you know, I wouldn't do a medieval fantasy LARP on this setting unless we were, like, looking through a crystal ball or something like that because it does mess with your immersion if you're not actually there in person. It, it is really different. I mean, imagine if we were role-playing being in the same room together and we had a scene and, like, I wanted to hug you and you were okay with, with that and you gave consent. Like, I can't actually hug you, right? You're not there. So there are limits to this format. And um, I'm doing just what I do for, uh, for any other kind of LARP. I'm designing for the setting when I can. So I know what setting I have to work with and I'm designing it. Uh, that said, I am considering doing some one-shot events. So they'll still be time intensive. Thank you for the hug. <laughs> they'll still be time intensive. Um, but, um, you know, it might be like a four or eight hour game. So if that's something people are interested in doing, I'm doing that too. And lastly, um, uh, I am doing, you know, Chariot LARP is a standalone adventure. Uh, and I am also going to run probably at, um, uh, Metatopia and hopefully also Gen Con next year. I am going to run Chariot LARP where it happens on the ship because we're all going to be there in person together. And so the online adventure is standalone. It can continue at a convention. Or you can just play the convention and not the online portion as well. And just kind of continue that adventure. So that's part of the idea there. So I don't think we're going to get Dave. I'm checking one last time to see if I heard anything from him. Uh, okay, hang on one second. He's just having trouble uh, logging in. Okay, I'm going to give him the link again. But we'll have him on shortly. Great. Okay. So Dave will be on in a few minutes. I'm going to give him a couple more minutes to, um, to get on here. But any more questions about this kind of game, I'm happy to, to field it. I also want to say, like, I'm growing this and I'm like really putting a lot of time into scaling it, if that makes sense. Um, it's become a big thing. Are the consultations via Google Hangout? Yes, they are. They are. I'm not sure why you see. Not me, just my picture. There we go. Um, yes, the consultations are via Google Hangout. 
So um, that's how the character creation process goes. And then the games themselves will also run on Google Hangout. So uh, yeah, the consultations are all out of game. Um, it is kind of just what you saw. Uh, Sharon, who you just saw on here, she and I have a, um, you know, a history role playing together. So I was kind of able to dive right in with her. Um, other LARPers that we're going to have on here are new. The first person we had on, that we interviewed on here was new, um, to LARPing. So each consultation is different and really personalized. And, um, I'll just read through what we have so far on the crew while we're waiting for Dave to show up. Uh, the first one we have, um, she's more into Renaissance fairs. She's new to LARPing. And, uh, she's really interested in playing a creative artist type. And she told me that she really admires Joni Mitchell. So, uh, so her character type might be more like that. Uh, more of a creative. The second person I interviewed for this particular mission, uh, a very experienced LARPer. She's an instigator. She loves playing an instigator. And she's interested in doing some kind of scientist politician. She loves McCoy from Star Trek. And um, she's really open-minded about like playing any gender or anything like that. So I might do something cool there. Uh, and I'm going to make her character kind of an upstart. And then the next person I interviewed, um, I've role-played with him before. Um, and he really wants to dive into grief and denial. And um, I think even have maybe an antagonistic relationship with the captain. Uh, so we're going to explore that there. We've He and I have played out romance-ish characters in the past. And we're kind of comfortable with that. And I think we're going to explore how these characters like hate slash love each other or hate slash want each other um, over this, which is so interesting because it's just over the chat, right? And then we just spoke with Sharon and um, I think I'm going to go for like a, a wisdom, like a wise kind of character. She wants to be, uh, I want to emphasize the importance of, of culture and retaining our information and taking our culture with us to, uh, to the new, you know, the new place, to the new, to Proxima B. And it's going to be a multiple role thing, right? Because there's 10 of us total on here. So we're all going to play multiple roles, just like in real life. Uh, you're never just one thing. You're never just your job. Uh, you are also other things. So you could be, um, you know, you could be a professional editor, but you're also maybe a wife or, um, <coughs> excuse me, you, maybe you're also a gamer. Um, so we're going to kind of explore multiple facets of, of this. So, yeah, the hate romance, that's, that's fun to play. Played that out of my Star Trek game recently. Really fun. Uh, everybody, everybody was watching the scene. And it was text-based, and they were like, fight, 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 kiss, kiss, kiss. And uh, it kind of became a thing, and it was pretty awesome. And, um, yeah, so <laughs> but they are fun to play. They are fun to play, and, uh, and I'd be totally fun. Uh, fun. It would be fun and comfortable to play that out with Marshall. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we have so far in our crew complement, and I really look forward to getting the rest of the characters put together. But we've waited a while for Dave. It's 15 minutes past his appointment time, so I'm gonna reschedule with him. Thanks for hanging out, and thank you for your questions and your interest. And uh, if you want to check out the LARP, I'm gonna send you to my website here. You can go to geekinitiative.com, and under the LARP menu is all the information you need about Chariot LARP. I think we still have three tickets left for our, de our Delta run. After that, our Gamma run is going to be uh, the people of color only run. The run after that is going to be the women only run. And then following that run, which will probably begin in the beginning of next year, that run will be, uh, again, open to everyone. So I do have those specific runs in mind. And then after that, we'll have more more stuff just open to everyone. So, uh, yeah. But there are a few tickets left, I believe, last I checked, for the Delta run. And uh, I greatly appreciate your support, sharing any of this stuff, any bits that you can donate, which are free to get by watching some ads. Just click the little pizza slice thing on the side. Uh, follows help me out. And if you have Amazon Prime and you live in the U.S., it's actually free for you to subscribe to me. It's included in your Amazon Prime Hangout. So if you hit the subscribe button at the top and subscribe with Amazon Prime, it gives me money, but it's free to you. And that goes to me developing games. This is my full-time job now. 
I recently played a game where there were alignments of fight, cinnamon roll, and salty. What are you? What are some of the roles you think can have those alignments in Chariot? That is a fantastic question. Um, you know, personality, I leave. Um, I do tend to give key descriptors like that. Um, and I certainly, just, just based on who's playing the game and who feels comfortable playing what, I can tell you, I'm gonna, we're going to have an aggressive, politically assertive character with a very serious agenda. Uh, we are going to have somebody who is a very creative spirit and loving soul. We're going to have an extremely empathetic counselor who also needs room to explore their own grief. And we're going to have somebody who's really angry with this whole grief process, but probably also really brilliant. And then we're going to have my character, who's 3,000% done with Earth, ready to go. Everyone, pack up, get on the ship. I don't understand why it's taking you so long. And maybe hiding a little bit of her own grief. And uh, not confronting some things. And um, I don't know how far I can delve into it in an alpha run, because I'm very concerned with the player's uh, psychological well-being. Is that Dave? Dave, you're here. Yes. But I do, um, you know, I do want to explore that to a degree. So, hi, Dave. Welcome. Hey, how have you been? It's been ages. Hey, it has been ages. It has been ages. We uh, are live, and we do have some viewers watching the character creation process here. So I'm going to go over a few things with you once I get my drink. Hang on a second. Not the kind of drink I'd like to have, but I do have some cold coffee here. <laughs> Great. So, um, what we're looking at doing is creating custom creating a character for you. And I want to keep the character process um, really, really focused on what you exactly want to play. So, the premise is that we're on a ship. And it's before we leave, or we're not on a ship yet, but it's before we leave. You've been selected. And before we leave Earth, you need to say goodbye to everything here. And you can be at any stage of grief or in any stage of, of that process. And that's kind of where we are. So, um, but you have a role on a ship. And I'm playing the captain, but there are some different things you can do. You can be a crew member. So basically think of any of your basics on Star Trek. You know, your engineers, that kind of thing. Uh, tactical, security, stuff like that. Our civilian scientists, because science is extremely important to what we do. We've got creatives who are like artists, musicians, writers, chroniclers, who um, just make sure to preserve culture and create more culture. Um, we have CSOPs, which are your uh, ship operations specialists. And they are in charge, they have their own autonomy and a lot of power because they're in charge of stuff like the ship is in charge of its own waste disposal, but CSOPs knows how to program all that stuff. So without them, uh, life support and everything like that gets a little tricky. Um, we have medical, pretty self-explanatory. And then we have uh, educational which is uh, responsible for educating everybody on the ship and keeping culture. And one thing to keep in mind as you have an interest in selecting a particular role, uh, it takes several generations for us to reach Proxima B, which is our location, uh, our destination. So you, your character has to leave Earth, which is ravaged by war, and your character is going to live and die on the ship. Uh, your children are going to live and die on the ship. Your grandchildren um, may live long enough to see Proxima B. They may not. Uh, their children will be on the, on the new planet. So um, you're not only saying goodbye to Earth and to anyone that you love here. You are also saying goodbye to really seeing anything other than the inside of a spaceship ever again. So that's kind of the crux of what we're dealing with. There are also some other um, sci-fi style politics and the like. You know, I try to keep it out of the real world politics and frustrations we're feeling. Uh, but of those different uh, job descriptions and maybe some specific archetypes that you usually enjoy playing, what are you thinking about um, possibly playing? Mm-hmm. 
guy who has to run around uh, fixing the engines mm -hmm. and explaining to people, I kind of changed the laws of physics. <laughs> I like that as your motto. Well, everybody wants to be Scotty from Star Trek at one point or another. Uh-huh. And one of my questions actually is, um, if you could think of a character that you admire that you might want to play kind of close to, who would it be? So that's a great answer. Yeah. So sooner or later, you got to be the gruff, uh, angry engineer because no one else is making sense. Mhm. Mm I like it. I'm taking taking notes here. Fantastic. So I can write an awesome character just just from that kind of stuff alone. How do you think your character feels about uh, leaving Earth, and how do you as a player feel about exploring grief in the Slarp? Like, how close do you want to get to that, or how removed do you want to be? Uh, well, I think when it comes to leaving Earth, step one, I want to work on the best engines in the universe, which brings us to step two, get on the ship with the best engines in the universe, mm -hmm. which brings us to here. So you're very work-oriented as a character, you think? I'm not flying into outer space if I'm on Earth. Right, right. Like, that said, I am willing to explore themes of grief. Mm -hmm. uh, but your character's probably like, great, I've developed this stuff, I'm looking to move forward. Pretty much. Awesome. So I'm thinking of making you not just an engineer who knows how to repair this stuff, but maybe that you were actually the person who developed um you are the person who developed the very engine that we're using in chariot how do you feel about that oh, that'd be fun. yeah i want to make you kind of brilliant i feel like there are only 233 people on the ship so you are one of the best of the best and who better to have than the very person who designed it you know to to make it happen that sounds like it could be fun and what i could even do and um, um, this is some lore building here, right? Um, when we name your character, I could actually name the engine after you. Oh, that sounds fantastic. And uh, if your character wanted to have, like, an, an ego component of, like, I made the engine, you could kind of seize that. I feel like you, that might lend itself well to you, yeah. <laughs> you, you get to be in charge. I love it. And something I'm learning here as we're talking, um, I'm writing that down. When an engine is named after you, you get to be in charge. Uh, one thing, my my friend Herb, who I, I played with in New World Magic Scola, he always has a catchphrase for his characters. He always is, and his character is named Reese Bellwether. Uh, and he always he always introduces himself. Hi, I'm Reese Bellwether of the New York Bellwethers. And ever since he first introduced himself, everyone was like, "I know that guy, right?" And um, like Minerva's, my character's always like, "Fight me, right?" So we all have our catchphrase. And even when he makes like cute little character sheets for us in other systems, it's got our catchphrase on it. And one cool thing I'm thinking is like our character sheet. It's not gonna have stats because it's not that kind of game. It's an it's a um, collaborative story game but uh one thing that would be cool is to have a quote like that just like a magic card but it's like something that your character says so um when you're when an engine is named after you you get to be in charge i love it or, or maybe when the engine has your name you call the shot i love it um, yeah You make decisions. I like it. Oh, when the engine is named after you, it's assumed you know what you're talking about. There you go. I love it. I love it. We can we can work with that. Um, so the last thing, and this is a really quick character creation process, uh, and just to explain to my viewers, uh, most of the people that I'm working with to create characters for the alpha test, most of them I've actually LARPed with before. 
Uh, Dave and I know each other. We've worked together before. Um, we've written stuff together before. Uh, we've LARPed a little bit together before. So uh, most of these people I have familiarity with because we've, we've played LARPs together before. So I can kind of dive right into character creation. It looks a little different when I'm talking to somebody who hasn't LARPed before or somebody that I'm new to. So you'll see this process shift a little bit depending on who I'm talking to. Um, but my last question for you is a very important one. Um, I want to check your pronouns and what you'd feel comfortable playing. So do you, what are your pronouns and would you feel comfortable playing someone with the same pronouns, different or whatever? And there's no wrong answer. I just want to ensure your comfortability. Well, uh, I'm pretty cis. Okay. Yeah. All right. Standard male All right. So I will keep that in mind for you. And, um, you know, this game, I don't build in, I don't pre-build any character relationships or anything like that. There's going to be a space for uh, all of our players to do that if they want, to optionally pre-role play, uh, but it's not mandatory. So that's kind of how I'm running this um, particular thing. And I was just telling Sharon, there's going to be, um, we will have a Discord server, but I don't know how many people are going to use Discord how many people will want to, but I'm going to leave it as an option so if people want to role play between sessions, they can. Because it is a large time commitment to do, um, you know, four hours a week for a, set, for a few weeks in a row. That is a lot. Um, but I do want to leave the option for people who want that full experience and to kind of get the most out of their, their money for it, you know. So um, we'll evaluate that as we go, uh, but I'll have that option there. Is there anything else that you want to add to this character? Because I have a couple quirks in mind that I want to surprise you with, but um, I, I, you know, I think your overall concept is fantastic. Uh, let's see. Or any other questions you have about gameplay, I can answer that now too. Yeah, I have no idea how the game works. Uh, like I said online, uh, my life has been. That's okay. No, that's totally okay, and it's super, uh, it's, the game, it's really meant that you can participate as much or as little as you want, as long as you show up. So, all you as a player have to do is click on the Google link, the Google chat link, and I take care of the rest. I stream it, I do all that stuff, that fun stuff. Um, you'll get some prep materials before each session, but it'll be like a page or two of stuff to read through. Uh, stuff that you could even read at the beginning of the session. It's not that difficult. As far as your set dressing, um, you can do whatever you want there. My character is, as I keep saying, 3,000% done with Earth. So she's going to be packed up and ready to leave and GTFO at the beginning of the game. Um, so my background is going to be what you see here with some boxes. And uh, that's it. That's going to be her thing. So when the game starts, we're going to do a workshop. And we're going to get everybody uh, comfortable and uh, talk about some emotional safety things, just like you would do at a, a Nordic-style game. And then when the game starts, and I was just answering this question about um, what makes us different from a role-playing game, instead of narrating what we're doing, we are playing characters, and it can be very immersive if we choose. We're sitting in front of a computer talking to each other. So the in-and-out-of-game setting is very, uh, very close. And... You know, the idea is that my character will be talking to your character over a computer, knowing that I'm going to meet you in person in a month, and that we will, um, you know, be on this ship together. Uh, there's also been talk of doing some role play in between, uh, about like, you know, um, fights or romances that start to happen in between that we can role play out on Discord if we want. Again, it's a big time commitment already with this game. But if something if people want to do that, that's a thing we can do. Or go off and, and say, like, hey, Dave, uh, we kind of got into a confrontation when your character wanted to sort of take over. Uh, and my character's the captain, and she's, like, very much in charge. Uh, let's just talk about maybe a conversation our characters had and how we resolved it. And uh, that can affect our play the next game. So stuff like that can happen, too. But overall, it's very much like log on, you're in character, um, you know, I'll probably have an out of character moment when we log on where I describe to any viewers what we're doing, and then that gives everyone a chance to log on, get settled in, and then um, when I say game on, we're in character. So we'll go through all of that at the beginning, but just to answer your question and to kind of put it out there for anybody watching, that's what's going on. 
<coughs> so, any other questions? Cool. Well, I will post more in the Facebook group where the alpha testers are, and I will get your character to you in probably five days or less. All right? Cool. Well, have a great night. It was great to see you and talk to you. Definitely. We should talk more. It's been, it's been way too long. It's been a while. It's been a while. We should talk more before our characters fight each other. I love it. Great. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> but I'm the captain. <laughs> uh, I'm the captain, and I demand you change the laws of physics. There is always another option. You make that happen. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, look, here's what I'm gonna do. I'll get a priest over here. I'll get a scientist over here. And the priest's gonna keep praying in this hand while the science works on this hand, and whoever finishes first wins. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on to the character creation. And I'll be in touch with more info. And um, I will... Yeah, don't Titanic the ship, says one of our viewers. Please don't. Bard, thank you. That is a great suggestion. Let's not Titanic the ship. I'm going to point out here that the Titanicking of the Titanic was caused by multiple factors, not the least of which was a captain... <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Blaming the captain. Oh my god. Multiple things. And my personal favorite, and this is the best part, the Titanic disaster would have been avoided completely if the captain had not tried to veer away from the iceberg. Uh, blaming the captain for not running into the iceberg. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. We are done here. <laughs> Just like old times. Yeah, have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> all right everybody um so again this is chariot larp if you have any other questions you can drop them in the chat right now uh or you can reach out to me um and i will give you my uh facebook page my pro facebook page so you can find me you can message us over at uh the geek initiative you'll hear from myself or michelle with an answer to your questions um, about this LARP and uh, again geekinitiative.com is where you want to go to find more information about the LARP. It's right under LARPs. Yes, I'm aware I do have a pupper doggo behind me. That's Odin. Um, myself and some other players are going to have our pets as part of the LARP. Um, the idea is to make it accessible and comfortable for everyone and um, Odie Dog is going to be uh, the pet that I say Goodbye to, yes. Chat is saying hi, Odin. Yes. Uh, now he's just being a brat. He just wants you to see his butt. There he is. That's Odin. Odin gets lots of love from, from everybody, even though he's bad. He was not a very good dog today. Um, <laughs> but, hey, I got some game development done, so that's the best I can ask for some days. All right. Cool. So that's a wrap, and thank you again for watching. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Uh, Geek Initiative's YouTube channel has all of this stuff chronicled. I'm excited people are going to write about this and stuff. So we're doing a new thing here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your questions. And we will talk to you soon.